Pause for a minute and think of what your life might be like if you lost the control of your arms and your legs. If you lost the ability to go to your favourite places, even do something as sedentary as go to see your favourite film. Well, if this film achieves nothing more than forcing you to do that, then it's achieved a noble purpose. Wait, don't your arms work? They don't. You can move your mouth. As can you. A friend of mine did go through that harrowing process this year, and that's why this film resonated so much with me. It does force you to appreciate the things that we take for granted, and we do take for granted the ability to walk and the ability to use our arms and legs. You need to wait your turn. Relax, it's not a hold up. Just sign this one, please. How would I sign it? I don't know, slowly. <sighs> Where he loses the ability to use his arms and legs and is confined to a wheelchair and thus needs to recruit life auxiliary, which is a Californian term for somebody to help him with everyday tasks, such as getting out of bed, with feeding, all of the things that we take for granted. I need assistance. How much does it pay? Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. One of the central characters here is Dell, who's played by Kevin Hart, a fine actor and a fine comedian, chosen to deliver the Oscars and within 24 hours, was dropped. Unfortunate features of the modern world, an army of people have nothing better to do now than to scroll through Twitter in a desperate attempt to try and find offence in something that somebody said going back 10 years. And needless to say, in Kevin Hart's case, being a comedian, he has come out with flippant comments. So the Oscars dumped Kevin Hart on the basis of flippant, comedic, remark that he made a decade ago. For any organisation to fire somebody on the basis of a tweet that they've made or a remark that they've made up to a decade previously, I think is beneath contempt. And whatever threadbare respect I did have for the Oscars, certainly completely gone now. One of the nails in the coffin in that, in any case, was Shape of Water swept the board at the Oscars. <laughs> Of course, the ironic thing about all of this in the first place was that the Oscars had chosen Kevin Hart in order to select somebody from a minority and in order to, to prove that they were more inclusive. The speed with which they dropped him due to knee-jerk reaction on the basis of some utterly ridiculous Twitter outing, I think just shows the tokenism that was behind their selection in the first place. And he's a decent man, and I think what has happened to him is an utter disgrace and an example of a feature of modern life which is utterly reprehensible. By definition, all future Oscar hosts will be bland people who've never made a controversial comment in their entire lives. So, in other words, they've been self-censoring themselves, playing it safe without making any comments which provoke or challenge, provoke the status quo, which, let's face it, in Oscar and in the Oscars and in Hollywood is an extreme left-wing liberal bias. Anything that doesn't conform with that will be erased. Basically, George Orwell's thought crime being policed. Kind of ironic in that the liberal left always brings up 1984 as an example of how Trump and his allies are policing things. The real truth of it, when you look at it, is that it's the liberal left which is engaging in this thought policing. The new liberal left is quite intolerant and very illiberal when it comes to dealing with any form of speech or humour that doesn't conform with their doctrine and dogma. Tell Back me about the a time when you worked hard to solve a problem. This morning, getting up. A particularly controversial part of the film is the DNR, so do not resuscitate. So in essence, Philip has decided that when it's time to go, he wants to go and he doesn't want to be left in a vegetative state or resuscitated to suffer any further. Dell diffuses this moral dilemma with humour, as he always does. So I've got this amazing gig, don't die in me now, I can't afford to live without you. You are not qualified for this position. Then buckle, buckle! Nicole's character, Yvonne, of course, is furious from the start that F Philip has even considered hiring Dell in the first place. And we are left wondering throughout the film whether it has been a wise decision. Dell succeeds in opening up Philip where few have managed before, getting him to reminisce about the old days when he used to go paragliding, very touching scenes where he remembers his wife who, who died some years previously and who has been on his mind ever since. Clash of the Cultures is emphasized through the use of music. You want to feed your soul? Then listen to its clean. Thank Being the stereotype that he is, rich businessman, interested in opera, Nessun Dorma theme tune that plays quite a bit throughout the film. Dell, initially, surprisingly, is not an opera fan. He quips that there aren't many opera fans in prison. Philip 
wins him over eventually, trips to the opera, which is, and he becomes an unlikely opera fan himself. Think, think about what you're trying to do to me. It's amazing, isn't it? I sound just like it. Yeah, it's uncanny. This film is based on a true story. Philip and Dell are still actually in touch. Extraordinary to find out. So the scenario is fully set up for them to live as another version of the odd couple, effectively. We're kind of like the original odd couple. You're the messy one and I'm- Shut up! Philip Rich, entitled, educated writer, the management of companies. Dell is the complete opposite. And sometimes it lapses into a, a bit of a stereotype here. All of the ingredients are set up for him to be ostracized, alienated from society. He's estranged from his wife and from his son. I'm sorry you gotta have a surprise party in your huge mansion. Some of us got real problems. I'm fighting to see my son. Who is showing all the signs of becoming a child prodigy. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, as he says to his wife, but he clarifies it before getting into trouble, saying, in this story, the apple is you. Wonderful to see Nicole Kidman back and looking absolutely fantastic at 51. She certainly does tower above everybody else, very statuesque figure. Plays his assistant, and they go through an interview process to find this so-called life auxiliary. And in this process, they go through parodying the, the politically correct culture, particularly the prevalent in the States now. Everything is very saccharine, super positive. For instance, people come into the interview and they say, I don't see a disability, I see this ability. Oh yeah. All of the potential candidates that Philip sees are over eager to be sweet and saccharine and blind to his disability until the entrance of Dell. Convict, who has just been released from prison and is obliged to take part in as many job interviews as he can in order to satisfy his PO, or as he explains to Philip, his parole officer. Yvonne, Nicole Kidman's character, is horrified when Philip decides to immediately hire Dell on the spot, presumably due to the fact that Dell is the only candidate who isn't full of shit. Let me be your arms and your legs. I love that. Dell is refreshingly direct towards Philip. Max, this is not a hold up. And unlike the other characters, he says, so you don't have the ability to use your arms and your legs. And so begins an unlikely friendship, a slightly odd couple effect where the two of them start out on very direct and open terms. Dell is a, an ex-con. We don't find out what his prison sentence was for. We certainly presented the fact that he was a criminal and throughout the movie there are signs that he could very easily lapse back into that. He is reunited with some of his ex-criminal friends who tempt him back in for some easy money as they say. There is plenty of uh, potential for stereotyping here and it does grate a little bit in certainly when he says he's asked what his father did and Philip is surprised when he says his father was an artist and of course he then qualifies that by saying he was a con artist. No! Dell does inadvertently become an artist in his own right later in the film when while he tries his hand to a bit of fine art unbeknownst to him Philip uses it as a tool to get back at a particularly snobbish neighbour. One of the lighter moments of the film. He was rich as Jay-Z? No, richer. Which car is yours? All of these to the right. Oh my God. They're not practical. Exactly. You can have any girl you want. What about this lady with all the bow ties? I'll be perfect for each other. You can't move your body, she can't move her face. Surprise! I specifically said nothing for my birthday. This is the moment. 